of mine, Donatelli and Perez. Chasing a suspicious male, throws a shot, gets Donatelli in the leg. He get away? Back of the building opens up onto Attorney Street. Chances are he came out there. You all right for us to talk to him? Yeah, go ahead. Hey, how you doing? All right. Did you get a look at him? Male black, 18 to 20. He has some kind of gray hooded sweatshirt underneath an army jacket. A knit hat. Height, weight. On the short side, probably 5'5", five, 5'6". Five, five, uh, thin built. What happened before you took off after him? We see him walking down the street. At first, I thought I recognized him from having locked him up. It looks like there's a bulge on his hip. I called to him, told him to come over. He takes off. Into there? Right there. First, I didn't see him, and then he jumps out from around the corner, threw a shot, and took off. Did you guys get any shots off? No. Look, guys, we got to get going. I'd like all to right. ride with him in the ambulance, unless you need me to stay. Mm -hmm. That's all right. We'll find you down at the hospital. Hey! Hey! What are you doing, huh? You see you're blocking an ambulance here? Get this car the hell out of here. Sergeant Subway. I saw that uh, directly across from where Donatella got shot, there was a woman sitting in the window. Name's Margaret Gregoric, apartment 1B. She was there at the time, saw Donatella and Perez going to the building, heard the shot. You might want to talk to her. Sounds like you already did. It's your case. We got a report of a homicide, 515 Bank Street. Clark and Jones, you guys take it. Andy, uh, let me get one of you up in a squad. Matter boy, do me a favor. Don't take my picture. It's my last day. I know it's your last day. I, uh, I just don't feel like having my picture taken. Okay. Who is she? Her name's Deborah Olshan. 37 years old. Looks like she got hit in the head with that statue. Who called in the job? Friend of hers, Maxine Annunziato. Let herself in with the wrong key around 9. Any sign of 4th century? Not that I can see. Looks like whoever it is got her rings. There's also a bunch of jewelry boxes in the dressing room that got cleaned out. Where's the friend? Maxine? Mm -hmm. I'm Detective Clark. This is Detective Jones. You found her? She was getting ready to redo her kitchen. We were supposed to go to ABC Carpet to pick out some tile. How'd you get in? I had a key from when I house sat for them. Who's them? Debbie and her husband. What's her husband's name? Barry Olsham. How did you know Debbie? We went to Midwood High School together. Looks like she did all right for herself. She married Barry because she loved him. As far as the money's concerned, she could have cared less. Well, what does he do for a living? He's in the jewelry business. They have a good marriage? Beautiful. She was a beautiful person. You know, she was like a saint. She was always like, you know, what can I do? What's wrong? Can I help you? Strangers she'd help. Her friends, her family. Forget about it. Is there a... Uh... Anyone that you know of who might have had access to the place? Oh, please. If someone rang the doorbell, she'd let him in. You gonna take a picture of her? Yeah. She'd hate that. I'm sure she would. What did they do this for? A diamond ring, a few gold chains. You were home this morning, Mrs. Grigorik? I went to 7 o'clock mass. After that, I was home. Which would be what time? Mass is 40 minutes. I stop at the candy store and pick up the news. I'm home by 8. The officer who talked to you earlier said he saw you sitting in the window. Sipowitz. Right. Polish names, I always remember. Is this where you were sitting when you came home? Except for when I'm watching my program or asleep in the bed. That's it. What time does your program start? 12 o'clock. Did you see any police officers run into that building around 8.30? I saw two of them go in there together. I wouldn't say they were running. Did you see who they were chasing? Unfortunately, I didn't. You didn't see a black guy, 5'5", five, 5'6", five, five, wearing a gray hooded sweatshirt and an army jacket? I'm sorry. 
Did you see anyone that fits that description in the area when you went to church, when you came back from church? This is who shot the cop? Yeah. I'm going to be keeping my eye out for him, believe me. Uh, this is Mr. Olshan and his attorney. Norman Haynes, how do you do? Uh, hi. Uh, why don't we go back in here? I understand you need to get started with your investigation, but given that Mr. Olshan just lost his wife, if we can keep this as brief as possible, that would be very much appreciated. We'll do our best. Mr. Olshan, uh, when did you see your wife last? I left for chakras this morning around 5.30. I'm sorry, what is chakras? Morning prayers. Where do you do that? Uh, the shul's on Ludlow Street. And where do you go from the shul? To the store. And which is where? Canal Amat. What does your wife usually do in the morning? Seven o'clock, she goes to the gym, comes home, showers, dresses, then she comes into the store. I'm talking about her like she's still here. Uh, Mr. Olson, were there any of your employees who might have been given access uh, to your home? What kind of access? Uh, keys, uh, the alarm code. No. Why would I do that? From my understanding, this was a robbery, is that right? Well, it appears some things may have been taken, but at this point, uh, we don't know if the motive was robbery. Sir, we're going to need a list of the people that you have working for you. Guys, I'm not trying to tell you how to do your job, but an expensive townhouse is a target for anyone looking to do a robbery. Why are we focusing on this being an inside job? There was no sign of four entries, so that means that someone either came to the door, your wife let them in, or they knew how to get in. There's no one working for me you have to worry about. Well, you may be right, but we still need to talk with them. Is there anyone that you come into contact with who might be dealing in stolen merchandise? Why are you asking him that? Because we'd want to talk to that person. Well, at this point, I'm going to have to terminate the interview. Counsel, we're just getting started. By the nature of your questioning, you've made my client a suspect. Now, showing up with a lawyer, he's made himself into a suspect. Where's it written you can't have a lawyer? Most people, if they're finding out their spouse has been murdered, don't call a lawyer. You're telling me I'm not grieving because he's here? You don't have to respond to them, Barry. We're just telling you it raises questions. I don't care what it raises. I don't care what you think of me. I know how I felt about my wife. God knows how I felt about my wife. And that's it. That's all that matters. I think we're done. So you and Barry were partners? Right. Does wife work here? Yeah. They have a good marriage. <laughs> Who am I to say it was a good marriage? Not as far as you could tell. They acted like a married couple. More than that, I don't know. Are you aware of any of the people working here having criminal records? Mister, this is a legitimate business. Well, nobody's saying it isn't. <laughs> These people handle hundreds of thousands worth of jewelry. They're honest people. Also, I watch them like a hawk. These are the people working for us. Thank you. Uh, how well did you know uh, W.O. Shen, Mrs. So? I knew her. Uh, she worked with you. I wouldn't say worked. When she felt like it, she came in the store. Sugne schlecht. They shouldn't know the truth. She was not from the community. Barry met her. Very exciting, very attractive. Everyone said, this is not someone you marry. But Barry didn't listen, so now he has problems. And uh, what kind of problems does he have? To lose a wife? To bring shame on your family? You think Barry had anything to do with it? <laughs> no, no. She doesn't think nothing. Barry, in his way, is trying to be a good Jew. He wasn't always, but he is now. We mourn his wife, Deborah, and that's all. And her friends. Psha! Enough! All right, Mr. Zell, we need to speak to your wife by herself. Please. Vergessen schwer du bist. Who were her friends? She had a friend, Maxine. It's an Italian last name. Dresses like a streetwalker, smokes. She comes in to see Deborah, acts flirtatious with the men. And I'm talking now about Deborah's husband and about my husband. Uh, when's the last time she was here? Last week. She and Deborah had words. I don't know what it was about. All I remember is Barry going over and saying, the answer is no, like that, strong. And were there problems between Barry and his wife? <laughs> Naturally, there were problems. Barry was trying to get back in touch with what it meant to be a Jew. And Deborah was trying to be for him a good Jewish wife. And with all that, 
this is who she's friends with. Decent people go with decent people. How's he doing? I don't know. They're doing x-rays now. Well, maybe you could take us through the sequence of events. I was driving. Pat was in the passenger seat. We go past the Gumper houses. We turn left on Remington. Pat spots the guy in the corner of Remington and Clinton. What time was that? About 8.30. You saw what looked like it could have been a gun under his coat, and you call him over to the car. What happens then? He ran down Clinton Street. We followed him in the car. Then what happened? About a third of the way down the block, he ran into this building that was under construction. Pat went in after him. What'd you do? I pulled the car over to the curb, secured it, went in after him. As soon as I got inside, I heard the shot. When I got to Pat, he was on the ground. I stayed with him. So you didn't go in together? No. Any more details on the description come to mind? The hat he was wearing, uh, I think it has some, some kind of logo on it. Well, we'd like you to come over to the station house, take a look at some mug books. Sure. Any word on whether they found the gun? Not yet. How long on the roof? 30 minutes. Uh, uh, before today, when, when was the last time you saw Debbie Olsen? I saw her last week. And where was that? I stopped by the store. Just a visit? As opposed to what? Uh, maybe there was something that uh, you had to talk to her about. What? Am I like a suspect here? Is that what's happening? Oh, we're talking to anybody who knew her. Oh, yeah. Well, she was going to bank for me to open up a salon in the city. We were talking about location, size. There was a million and one details to go over, so uh, that's what it was. Uh, were you having an argument? <laughs> we were like sisters, all right? I mean, sometimes we yell, sometimes we'd argue. That's what sisters do. Did it affect your relationship that she started to get more religious? Oh, yeah, it did. I mean, when Barry started getting crazy with all this Jewish stuff, Debbie had a big problem with it. I was her Kujet friend from her old life, which, you know, Barry's whole Orthodox scene might have nothing to do with. Are you still one over the house, though? Yeah, sometimes. I mean, you know, we go to lunch or, you know, she go out once a week. I mean, the girls still like to go out, Jewish and no. Well, she meet anybody going out? What, in, as in, like, starting to see somebody? No, like somebody who might have spotted a rock on her finger and found out where she lived. There was this Russian guy that we used to see every once in a while when we'd go to the clubs. I mean, he was all over her. She had this five and a half carat canary yellow diamond. It was gorgeous. And I remember him making a really big deal over it. Is there any reason to believe he does robberies? I don't know. I didn't think of this before, but he used to tell us if we ever needed Gucci or Prada or Louis Vuitton that he could get it for us. Oh, what's his name? Uh, Mike. I never got his last name. But Debbie used to call him Russian Mike. What does he look like? He had short hair, thin face. Really, you know, really Russian looking. I remember that he dressed nicer than most of the Russians, though, and, and he had a, a, a spider tattoo on his hand. Any idea where we can find him? There's a restaurant on uh, Brighton Beach Avenue called uh, Olga's. I think he said he hung out there. Nucci only wants you, sweetheart. Sorry. Uh, can I go finish up? Sure. Making any headway with this horror show? Some. Maxine, check about it. Lenny, get over here. Hey, Jones, let me shut up. What's the husband of the DOA showed up with his lawyer? Yeah, it might be that there's some uh, Russian involvement. Jewelry outfits were good for laundering money. Yeah, that's true. So that's a good arrangement, you and Jones? I think. Obviously, I'd just soon be back working with you. Don't be telling me that no more, OK? OK. Mike around? Who is that? Mike. 
I don't know, Mike. Where's your boss? He's not here. Right, Mike has short hair. He's got a spider tattoo on his hand. I don't know, Mike. What's your name? Paulina. You tell us where he is now, Paulina. Nobody will know you told us. Now, on the other hand, if we find out that you're lying to us, we'll come back when the place is full. That way, everyone will know. <sighs> Why do you think I'm lying? He said if. I don't know, Mike. I know Misha. Uh, he fits the description? To block this way, a blue building. What's his name on the buzzer? Nosikov. Thank you, Paulina. You don't come back now. If we find him there, we won't come back. Good. How's the leg? They gave me something for the pain. It's all right. It's my wife, Teresa. I'm Detective Ortiz. This is Detective Murphy. Nice to meet you. We need to go over the sequence of events with you. Uh, you want me to wait outside? No, it don't matter. <sighs> OK, well, where do you want me to start? Um, when you spotted the guy? Anthony was driving. I was in the passenger seat. It was about 8.30. We called him over to the car, and he took off. Where was this? corner of Clinton and Rivington. You follow him in the car? About a third of the way down the block where he ran into this building with a construction fence around it. I jumped out and ran in after him. What about your partner? Oh, he came in after me. After you? Right. What happened once you got inside the construction fence? I stepped into a doorway. I looked to my right, and there were some kind of concrete forms for a stairway. And this guy stepped out from behind him, fired one shot, I went down, and, and that was it. Where was your partner at this point? He came running in after he heard the shot. Then he stayed with me. If I know Anthony, he wishes it was him who got shot. Definitely. Anything else occur to you by way of description? I say he had a knit hat on. Yeah, he did. Uh, I think it had some kind of logo on it. We've managed to locate a witness who saw the two of you go into the building. Oh, yeah? Yeah, there's some discrepancies between her account and your account. Like what? She said you and your partner went in together. You say you went in separately. Maybe she figures him coming in right after me is like going in together. I, I don't know. She said neither one of you were running. She's wrong. And she didn't see that you were chasing anyone. So she didn't see. So what does that mean? I mean, maybe she got distracted. Maybe she's nearsighted. Pat, don't get excited. No, I mean, they're acting like there's some kind of major contradiction here. It's also sounding a little bit like you and your partner might have rehearsed some of your answers. Are you trying to piss me off? I think I'm going to wait outside. We're just trying to find out what happened. I told you what happened. I got shot. We need to know the circumstances. The circumstances are exactly what I told you they were. Exactly what Perez told you they were. Now, I don't feel like being cross-examined while lying in a hospital bed. So if you want to play Sherlock Holmes, you're going to have to wait until I'm out of here. And I got a delegate sitting next to me. Maybe we'll talk to you again when you're feeling a little better. That wife knows something she's not saying. I think? I think we need to go back there and talk to her by herself. A uh, patrol found a gun in a garbage can near where the shooting was. Oh, yeah? Uh, ballistics is uh, looking to work up a match on it. Uh, get one of you, John. Oh, sure. Um, do you want me to be doing anything specific? No, just just like that. Just sitting at your desk. Hey. What's going on? Uh, just uh, taking a few pictures to uh, remember to play spy. That's a good idea. Uh, get one of you, boss. Sure. Uh, boss. Got a possible suspect, Russian in Brighton Beach. Knew the DOA. Sounds like he might be doing robberies on a regular basis. You want to hit the house? Uh, do we have to bring an emergency service with a guy like this? That's the procedure. All right, any chance that, uh, I don't know, you could come along so that we don't have to? Come on, what's the problem? There's always some jughead sergeant who want to see the paperwork or seal off the block. Man, everything with these guys is D-Day. I'll meet you downstairs. You want to come with us, Greg? Where are you going? To the house. Yeah, sure. Police! 
Please open up. I'm going to take the door. Get your hands up. Hands up. I'm hit. I'm hit. Who shot you? I don't know. Where'd you shoot her? Down there. Down there. Down there. Which one? Which one? Check the back stairs. You got a 10 13. Officer down. 6 1 Priest. Keep your hands on it. Keep your hands on it. Put a rush on an ambulance. Have additional units Boss, respond. Look at me. Stay with me. Come on. You'll be okay. for the one guy. Bill hadn't gotten in yet. Another guy comes out of the back door, got a shot off and split. How's he doing? They just took him into surgery. It ain't good. Who's with the one you brought in? Or Greg brought him back to the house. The second whip up in the squad? No, sir. In. Okay. I want you to work in this case. I'll notify the chief of patrol. Get out of the bag, back in the suit. You got it. Okay, hey guys, you heard that. How is he? He was still in surgery when we left. Where's your lawyer? I, uh, I wanted to talk to you without him. I talked to my rabbi. He said there are things I, uh, I need to tell you. Like what? The reason I came here this morning with my lawyer was uh, I was afraid you'd want to look into my business. What are you afraid we find? That I moved money around. You laundered money? Yeah. Who are the people you did it for? Look, I didn't come here to cast blame. I did this. This was my transgression. I don't think it had anything to do with what happened to Deborah. We need the names of the people you did it for. This was a robbery. I don't think they get involved with robberies. We can't assume that. If they didn't, I've gotten them into trouble for something I'm just as responsible for as right, they are. Barry. Listen to me. A police lieutenant was shot and critically wounded in the course of investigating your wife's murder. That means you don't get to pick and choose what you tell us and what you don't, okay? Everything comes out now. He could die. We need names, Mr. Olshan. There's a guy named Lenny Russo who brokered it. He's the only name I know. How'd you meet him? He works with Maxine. She doesn't live the most upstanding life in the world, but... It was important that Deborah maintain that relationship. Anyway, one day she brings over Lenny. When was the last time you talked to him? A couple of weeks ago. He wanted to open a salon in the city, which suddenly became my responsibility. There was a lease that had to be signed. He had given notice. I told him I didn't want to be involved with him anymore. Has he ever been to your house? No. I kept all that away from my house. Then when I decided to live a more upright life, to stop doing these illegal things, I thought I got away with it. Now God takes my wife away from me. You get away with nothing. Teresa, can you think of any reason why your husband would lie about the shooting? No. Well, if he is, it's really best that we find out sooner rather than later and that it's us that finds out rather than internal affairs. Why would he lie? If he's involved in some kind of illegal activity and the shooting stems from that, he might be lying to cover it up. Pat would never be involved in anything illegal. If you knew him, you would never even suggest that. Well, maybe it's his partner, and he's lying to protect him. The both of them, they're totally honest, totally straight. They're not being straight with us now, and we need to know why. Pat has cancer. How long has he had? Um, we found out six months ago that he had it in his colon. And last month, we found out it had metastasized in his liver. We're so sorry to hear that. I'm not supposed to say anything to anyone. 
He wants to keep on working. He doesn't want anyone to know. Don't worry about that now. I don't know that it has anything to do with this, but I think maybe it does. I should probably go back in and be with him. Go ahead. Sergeant Sipowitz, the individual who was present in your apartment, who shot the police officer, I need his name. Well, I tell you what I tell other guy. I don't know name. Your name's Misha? Right. The thing you have to know, Misha, I don't care how long this takes. I don't care what I have to do to you, but you will tell me his name. What? I don't know. I don't know. Before we leave this room, you will tell me his name. I've been in Soviet prison. Uh -huh. I've been beat plenty before you come along. Who's the guy who ran? I don't know name. I think you probably are a pretty tough guy, Misha. I handled myself not so bad. I think you probably could stand a halfway decent beating. No problem. The building on Brighton 4th Street. Who else lives on your floor? Ukrainian woman with small children, uh, old Russian man. That's it? Also, maybe a guy named Willie. Willie what? I don't know Willie what. I guess I could see how close I come to killing you before you tell me what I need to know. I go too far, so be it. You don't kill me. We got you on illegal weapons charges. You are in possession of stolen merchandise. I don't even do nothing. This guy shot a New York City police lieutenant. Do you actually think that anyone around here gives a rat's ass what I do to you? They will take your body out of here, throw it in the river, and all I'll get, if anyone finds out, is a pat on the back. I... Don't shoot no lieutenant. That wasn't me who did that. That's right. But you're the one I got, and you're the one who's going to go to prison for it. And I am not talking about locking you up with no Russians. Upstate New York, it's blacks, Puerto Ricans, Dominicans, wall to wall. How long? Well, put it this way. You're a young man now. You'll be an old man by the time you get out. His name is uh, Sergei Isenin. Where do we find him? He have a sister in uh, Rigo Park named Kazinov. He have girlfriend in Fort Lee. I don't know name. I, I only know building. Let's hope that information is good. He don't fear nothing, that guy. Uh, not police, not nothing. Let us worry about that. When's the last time you saw the Viosha, honey? Month ago. Two months. And where was that? I think she was out with Maxine and I saw them at a restaurant. Hmm. Who was putting up the money for the salon you wanted to open in Chelsea? We were still in the process of looking for backers. Were you hoping for something from the Oceans? Uh-uh. Friendship and business? I believe you keep separate. Yeah. And I believe you're getting pretty nervous right about now. Why? Do I have that Nixon thing going on around the upper lip? Maybe I should go powder. You tried to hold Barry up, we noticed. Excuse me. Once representations were made, I thought they should be made good on. That's not holding anyone up. See, so when you started negotiating a lease... I needed to know I had a place. You gave notice of a place in Brooklyn? Because I don't leave people hanging. But when Barry told you that he wasn't going to bankroll a salon and he wasn't going to do any more money laundering deals, you decided to get the money in another way. Sorry. Homie don't play that. Look, we're not saying you did it yourself, Lenny. If Maxine gave you a key and you tell us that, you'd be cooperating. If Deborah came in while you were there, who's to say she didn't come after you? That you want to fear for your life? You see, Lenny, you're a licensed hairdresser. That means your prints are on file. 
and we'll commit as much time as we have to, as many cops as we have to, and we'll search their place until we find prints that match. And at that point, we don't need you to say anything, and you won't be able to help yourself. If I say I'm gonna be someplace at 9 o'clock, I'm there at 9 o'clock. People are like, I overslept. I had a personal crisis. I don't do that. I've been working since I'm 14 years old. And my word is like gold. Yeah, well, not everyone's like that. Tell me about it. The Ultrans are first in, then they're out. Maxine's going to convince Debbie, and then she can't. Debbie's not going to walk in on me, and then she does. What happened when she does? She went after me, and I grabbed the closest thing I could find to defend myself with, which just happened to be some hideous marble statue. Maxine gave you the key? She gave me the key. She gave me the alarm code. She told me where the jewelry was and what time her friend went to the gym. I mean, does she think I'm going to take all the responsibility, all the blame, all everything, all the time? Sorry, Maxine. That's not going to happen. Anything? A couple were close, but they weren't him. I think we have a problem here, Anthony. What's that? The story you guys were telling us doesn't check out. You found the gun. Which you could have easily put there for us to find. The witness we talked to said she saw you and Donatelli walk into the building together. She didn't see that you were chasing anybody. We also know from Donatelli's wife that he has cancer. What are you guys trying to do? Hurt him? Right now, we're just trying to find out what happened. Pat Donatelli is faced with dying of a disease getting ordinary benefits and having his wife and kid get nothing after he's gone. Are you saying you falsified a report? Or retiring on three quarters for a line of duty injury that gets paid in perpetuity. Officer. What would you do? Hmm? What would you do if it was her? And what would you do if it was her? We understand you're in a tough position. He's just trying to look after his family. For right now, don't say anything to anybody. Let us see what we can do. What's going on with that? Donatelli has cancer. The gunshot wound was self-inflicted. So he'd get three quarters. How do you know? Perez admitted it. Does he realize he still gets three quarters if it's an accidental shooting? I don't know. I don't know why he didn't just say that. Do we need to call internal affairs? I'll adjust the paperwork. It'll read accidental and we'll hope for the best. Even though the girl thinks he was shot by a perp? Hopefully when they find out he's sick, they'll leave it be. Thanks, Hank. Any time. Well, Max, saying we got a couple problems. What? Well, the first is you sent us on a wild goose chase that resulted in a cop getting shot. What, am I clairvoyant? Am I supposed to know a cop's gonna get shot? Look, I told you about a Russian guy who I thought might have murdered my friend. Sorry. Well, then that brings up the second problem, which is Lenny just confessed. Lenny as in Lenny Russo? Mm-hmm. He said he went there to burglarize a place, Debbie walked in, and he wound up killing her. God, I think I'm gonna be sick. He says you gave him the key and the alarm code. I did? I think Lenny's gone off the deep end, is what I think happened. Look, Debbie and her husband reneged on putting up money for a salon. It's not hard to understand you thinking something was over. You actually believe him that I had anything to do with this? Well, we're just trying to make sense of what happened here. Well, try a little harder. I mean, why would I get involved with robbing a girl that I grew up with? For what? Five and a half carat yellow diamond? No way, you got the wrong girl. Well, you do have a key, you do know the alarm call. Well, Glenny could have gotten in by ringing the doorbell. I mean, Debbie knew him, she would have let him in. Yeah, but then the body probably wouldn't have been found in the bedroom. Yeah, and then there is a matter of the phone call. What phone call? The call that Lenny made to after he killed Debbie. Now, before you say there's no call, keep in mind we're gonna dump the Ocean's phone, Lenny's phone, and your phone. And since what you did after you got the call was you went to the house, you let yourself in, and then you pretended to have discovered the body, <laughs> It'd be hard to find a grand jury that wouldn't indict. Are you saying that I'm responsible for killing her? 
It's not up to us to say what you're responsible for. All we can do is tell you that it is in your best interest at this point to tell the truth. Me and Lenny have been working on Avenue J for six and a half years. We weren't looking for a free ride. We're just looking to better ourselves. I mean, is there anything so wrong with that? Not at all. And there's Debbie, you know, same as me, except now, you know, she marries a rich husband. And she said she would help. Then Barry got religion, and the two of them start acting like they're having God over for coffee and cake. And then she can't do it no more. And meanwhile, he's laundering money for drug deals, and she used to bang guys to get a ride to Atlantic City. Lenny's right about one thing, you know. She should never said anything if she wasn't gonna come through. You didn't know Lenny was gonna kill her. You figured by the time she came home, he'd be long gone. There was a pair of diamond earrings and a double strand of pearl necklace in her top drawer of her dressing table. It was worth $100,000. I mean, we would have been done. But instead, he decides to go see what else there is. You gave him the key. Yeah. Hey, how's the lieutenant? He's out of surgery in ICU. All they're saying is he's stable. He had his spleen removed, and there may be some kidney damage. Uh, no prognosis, though? Not yet. What do we know about the shooter? I got the Russian to give us his name and addresses. Queen's homicide hit the one in Regal Park, and the uh, Jersey State Police hit the one in Fort Lee. The information he gave us was good. We just came up empty. Are we sitting on him? That and turning Brighton Beach upside down. What happened with the two you brought in? They went for it. Yeah, he went to do a burglar and got walked in on. She set it up. Yeah, what do you think we should do with the husband's money laundering? <laughs> Guy lost his wife. Let that be enough punishment for one day. IRS wants to go after him for money laundering. That's up to them. What are they going to do for a lieutenant around here? They'll send in a covering boss from the borough. What are they doing with you? They want me to work this case. After that, I go back downstairs. Wasn't today Detective Metavoice last day? Oh, I forgot all about that. Oh, we're going to throw him a racket. I know, but we should have done something for him today. Let me go talk to her. You know, uh, with all this been going on, we kind of lost sight of the fact that you're leaving us. Yeah. Yeah. I have to say, I've been having second thoughts. Oh, yeah? There's no time to be leaving when one of our own was hit. I don't know if that should cause you to have second thoughts. I've been part of this squad for a long time, Andy. When we divided up the chores and went with finding out who did some awful thing, when we went out to run them to ground, I was part of that. Awful things happen every day, Greg. And every day they'll be dividing up the chores. After you're gone, after I'm gone. But you're not leaving. The day will come when I will be. And just like you, I'll take some of this place with me. Just like you, I'll leave a part of myself behind. The important thing is that you got something that you're going to be going to. Hmm. Yeah. I do. It's probably right that you should go when you planned on. Hey, Andy. Can I take your picture now? Hey, Junior. Come here. Let's take a picture of the two of us. Uh, three, three. 